Heyo, welcome everyone to episode 23 of Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this week we're going to dive into uh, an indie game from South America called Nave. Um, I'm here with the creators today. This game is awesome. Like, it's a crazy space kind of shoot 'em up simulator Galaga vibe. There's a whole lot going on. So, I'm going to let these guys um, just introduce the game themselves and themselves. So, how are you guys doing today? Hey, hi. Hey, hi. Great. All right, so just tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you kind of got started on this track. Okay, uh, I'm Hernan Saez. I'm uh, part of uh, Videogamo. Uh, we are an indie studio uh, from Buenos Aires, Argentina, that started in 2010, and we specialize in dedicated hardware games. Uh, I personally started uh, uh, as a filmmaker many years ago and then switched into games. So now I'm a game designer and also graphic artist. Uh, yes, I'm Maximo Balestrini. Um, I started like, um, I studied system engineering and, and after a while uh, we met with Hernan and I've always wanted to, to make games or uh, I fantasize about it a little bit in the past and when we met with Renan. We both started doing this like uh, like a hobby uh, in our free time, and and well, that's how Video Gamo uh, started. Gotcha. So um, you guys kind of said that you you just happened to meet. I'm wondering how did you guys actually meet, and how did you guys come up with the idea for Nave? Uh, we met. Uh, I don't know exactly the time, but I think it's. 2006 or seven, uh, I was uh, dating Maximo's sister, <laughs> and uh, for sure. yeah, and uh, well, we we both like games. I was uh, working at a company, and Maximo was working with friends, uh, doing programming stuff that wasn't exactly games. And um, we started to uh, get together like once a week. Uh, this was, yeah, 2009, 2010, uh, every Tuesday, like at least two or three or four hours. And, uh, now it was one of the first, uh, prototypes we, we worked on. Uh, we were like trying to do stuff, different stuff at that time. Uh, there were like the flash games, uh, scene. So, uh, Lots of indie stuff from there, so we uh, like starting to fantasize to make uh, games for Flash and maybe get some money or something like that. Uh, and uh, and well, uh, many of those, uh, most of those prototypes uh, died, but uh, Nave like stayed as a as a game we were working on like for two years, from 2010 and 2012. And till we made the arcade, uh, Nave started. Uh, we want to make something simple uh, uh, to try. How was that uh, the market, or I don't know, to do whatever we wanted, but try to sell it uh, online, and started like a a a, a project for that. Um, um, it survived because of its simplicity. Uh, it actually was like I, I, uh, um, Maximo was programming and programming all the prototypes and stuff. I was doing graphics and I wanted to learn uh, Game Maker. And uh, I made the first tutorial of Game Maker. And then I made started the second tutorial that is a kind of shoot 'em up like uh, 1942, 43. And... Uh, but I wanted to make my own graphics. And then I asked help uh, to Maximo to help me make, uh, to help me program. But he took the graphics and started to program the game himself. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I really, uh, I fell in love with the, with the graphics right away. So I, I didn't have the patience uh, to, to let her uh, learn programming. So. The next time we, we met after uh, he showed me those those graphics, I it was just a simple. It was the the, the smallest um, spaceship and some the, the I think the sky uh, the the stars, 
and the next time we met, I I, I have already uh, make a super small prototype because I I was anxious to to try it. So yeah, that's always really good at getting a project in your hands that you're really excited about and it's all you want to focus on. I think that's that's interesting that Hernan came up with the idea and then you Maximo just like you just took it and ran with it. You were like, this is awesome. I want to do this. Uh, that kind of leads into my next question of how, uh, what is Nave and like, can you explain how the game works and what the objective of the game is? Um, the objective of the game is to survive or resist as much as you can. Uh, the game is a black and white game, low resolution, uh, 324 uh, by 240. Uh, we made it that way too, so we, you have less pixels, you have uh, less space to fill, and that's faster. So uh, we started like that, and the game uh, just starts. It's it gets harder at that time. There were games like Cannibal that were like those runners. So we um, so we put that kind of uh, of score. Uh, the score is time. So and, and it measures like years and months and weeks and, and days and hours, seconds and frames. It's like a kind of a joke. And uh, you have to survive as much as you can. And then you have uh, a, a power bar that uh, goes down like a uh, Wonder Boy, you know. Uh, and then you have uh, um, the E power up that when you get that, the, your energy goes up, but it's always getting down. Then you have a uh, the P power up, uh, and when you grab it, the the ship like grows a little bit and has more firepower. Uh, and then there's the T for turbo that uh, makes you go like uh, like forward and in time and in uh, difficulty. And then there's the B that's the bomb that clears all the screens. So the kind of the joke is that. Uh, you with the p the the, the power up for 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 fire uh power uh you get bigger and bigger because there are many <laughs> never rings so i was uh yeah so uh, when you grab the the thing is that when you grab the p the p uh your ship gets a little big a, a little bigger but then you grab another one and gets a little bigger but when you get hit gets a little smaller so you lose that part so those parts work as a kind of a shield but you can grow the ship like the whole screen uh there's only like two pixel three pixels left from each side so uh the bigger you get the the harder it is to move but it's uh, better for resistance so there's a kind of a dynamic that uh makes the game like uh weird and kind of crazy and kind of a joke of the old school, like grabbing power-ups and getting bigger. And well, that that's, that, that's the thing with the software part of the, of the game. Yeah. I mean, the game looks awesome. It, I want to play it so bad. Um, mm -hmm. Argentina is kind of far away from Minnesota. Um, but I, I really like the depth and the dynamic of the game and, I've been kind of curious um, since you hit me up really early on um, from Video Game about what this scene is like in South America. And I I saw a video you sent me about a traveling bus of indie games. Can you tell me a little bit more about that, either Maximo or Hernan? So, um, well, uh, this, uh, a little bit like continuing with the story, we, we, we started working on Nave in 2010, but then we had uh, some projects in between. And in 2012, we got invited to a, a showcase that that's here that's called Game On. It's like a art and game showcase. So we didn't, we just had this this game to show, and it was like, and and, and we said, okay, it's this showcase. It's two weeks. So uh, on on the one hand, uh, we don't want to be there two weeks, but if we have a computer, you have to explain, you have to make sure people doesn't touch anything wrong. And at the same time, we felt like the, this game was made for, for uh, arcade. <clears throat> so 
in July 2012, we started building the arcade for, for, for Nave, wishing that uh, this was like a two weeks construction and then we could finish the game for the day that was in October. And, but then the, the, the cabinet took like three or four months and the game was never finished, <laughs> but uh, it worked. So that, that thing uh, started kind of uh, a little movement of players and because the arcade scene here was just like a family business and there were just a few. And, uh, but then there, were, we, we started to show the, because the, there's only one cabinet of, of Nave, we, we made the cabinet to showcase. And then we went, we were, uh, going to, uh, upload it to, uh, at first to the OUYA console, like the, that, uh, indie console that, uh, didn't work and, and then to steam. But then some people started playing the game and said like, Hey, it's cool that there's only one and that's that's the only way you can play. You cannot download it. You cannot do anything else. So that little thing of uh, starting uh, going places because we, we got invited and stuff uh, started like a, a, a little movement with other um, colleagues that were making games and they started also making their, their, their arcades and there were more and more uh, gigs and dates and events uh, with uh, more colleagues that started making not only uh uh, they their own uh, arcade cabinets and games, but also pinballs and also uh, foosball, like a like a w weird avant garde foosball and uh, stuff like that. So uh, we started to become friends uh, in the scene, and 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 that was the only other way to play arcades uh, in at least in Buenos Aires uh, because the all the small arcade. Uh, places were like closed. Uh, so this was all events like parties and bars and expos uh, and stuff. So after years of that, uh, last year, we and we all those people that we some uh, arcade bars started to appear. So we started to gather around uh, and, and, and talk and talk about ideas. And one idea was to get all the arcades uh, into a bus and, and travel around the country. But it was like a crazy idea. But uh, like two years ago, there was a, some kind of, uh, of um, prize uh, to make docu documentaries about uh, video games here in Argentina. And uh, a production company uh, that we knew uh, uh, told us about this and we told them the idea we had about the traveling bus. So we, something that we thought it was, it would be like for some, something in the future, uh, finally happened last year around September. So, uh, we and a bunch of friends, uh, bought, uh, bought this, uh, school bus and we tour around for a few days, uh, for a few cities, uh, with the bus, like a kind of arc, an arcade circus and, uh, also, like teaching young people about game making and like making a kind of a, a, a flash mob, like going to a, a small town with the, 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 all the arcades and pop up there. And uh, that's how the, 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 the school bus, the, the indie arcade bus, uh, worked. That's pretty cool. I mean, hearing that the scene grew directly from that and everybody got to get involved with that it's cool that a, a film production was looking for games specifically down there um i'm wondering from you maximo i want to hear a little bit about these world tournaments that you guys hold um what are those like and where have you had them uh well it, it started in 2013 was uh, the first tournament after uh, we created nave and they started as um, we, we thought up uh, uh, about them as um, a way to give uh, something back to the players, to the, our fans, um, the people that that knew the game or follow the game. And uh, the first year was really a really s small tournament in in Hernan's house uh, apartment, one bedroom apartment, really small. I think I don't know how many we were like. Uh, 15. 
15 okay yeah. and and yes yeah, so it was it started like that like uh trying to give something to the players after a whole year and and after this that first uh, first experience we we grew out um next year um there were more people coming in so we started doing it in a, in a place a little bit bigger and yeah normally people come uh that you have to um you, you have to have played naba before to, to participate in the tournament and it lasts many hours the the last one lasted i don't like 36 something like that run i no, don't know like 52. oh okay <laughs> oh you're running for a couple of days yeah. yeah yeah because uh as people started to play um better and they last a lot uh and and there's more people because that there's mainly like people that that uh, don't play that often so they don't last as much maybe a couple of minutes but the um, the guys that break uh breaks the records like last like three hours so it's a long tournament and but we try to keep people entertained with like have some uh, live bands uh, music uh some of our double tone other uh, of our other games are there uh and yeah it's, it's a party for for the, the players mainly and and we have we have been doing it once a year it's a world tournament anyone can participate if they come to uh where the tournament is happening normally it's it's always in argentina but we don't know uh yeah yes it's it's a little bit like that that's that's a really cool way to one celebrate the game and the community but also to just get everybody together and have a good time i mean having music and other games and other things to do um is definitely a reason to go out and play the game and, um, and sorry and and it uh, one thing that happened is also like uh many people met met each other because of the game uh so uh, it's also like a good social uh meeting where all those fans and people get together and talk about the game and talk about uh strategies and look at the the, the best players do some uh, have their ter technic uh, techniques or whatever so it's it's really a, a fun celebration i think for all the, the the players yeah i mean the community is really what drives these games and just being able to meet people within that community that have the same interest as you and you can just nerd out with them is is such a fun thing um i'm really really interested in the fact that you guys only have one cabinet um being a member of the galactic battleground team we have a whole bunch of cabinets and we usually bring multiple cabinets to conventions and stuff so i was wondering um where has this one cabinet gone with you guys and uh what conventions have you visited um well, the the cabinet uh, mainly toured around Argentina, uh, and mainly in 2014 and 15, um, and we were to many uh, cities from from the country. The, the country is pretty big, so we went north and and west and and tour around, uh, and the other. But once we crossed uh, to Chile, uh, that it's. Uh, a, a, uh, it's in the limits, uh, in the borders of Argentina, uh, in the west. So, and then it's the Andes, you know, the 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 mountains. Yeah, the mountains. So we cross with uh, with our car and a trailer and the and the arcade. We travel like uh, a thousand, and th uh, half, uh, yeah, twelve hundred kilometers, uh, and each way. And um, and we we've been to mostly to uh, uh, to conventions from here. Uh, there's the uh, EVA, that is the Exposition of Video Games of Argentina. Uh, that happens once a year. And then there's... Uh, uh, we, we've been to, like, uh, some cent uh, con con cultural centers that are uh, well-known well in Buenos Aires. Uh, but uh, our main... 
our main thing with Nave is not uh, conventions that much, but like regular, uh, you know, bar and parties and arcade bars and uh, and school and uh, schools and stuff like that. Uh, we made like a like a, around a seven uh, like one hundred and seventy five presentations so far. So uh, we we and, and most of those presentations are in places like that. Um, and uh, with Navia, we're 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 wishing to uh, tour around the world. For now, that is uh, it's it, it's only for Dobotone uh, or Dobotone, our other project, uh, which fits in a in a suitcase. And with that, yes, we've been around uh, to many of many of Indiegate and uh, uh, London Game Show. So you guys made it out to Japan too with that one. Yeah, the the Tokyo Game Show. So like uh, Dobotone is the ambassador that it's uh, preparing the way. Uh, for Nave to to around, so uh, so yeah, we 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 we're aiming uh, because right now we're working on Double Tone on making a sellable version of, of Double Tone that will have a different treatment that we're giving to Nave. So we're not having that much time to work more in work more in Nave and to around. But once that's done, uh, we we're pretty sure we'll try to make like a world tour or something like that we've been invited to uh, several places in the u.s and in europe and uh, other places of south america uh so so yeah but it's like a mid-term long-term project we 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 expect to keep on slowly but surely uh touring around the world yeah we we were really close to making a, a kickstarter uh for for taking it to gdc I don't remember 2016 or 17. 15. That's 15. the one that's in uh, San Francisco, right? Yeah, uh, because that's the, the the game developer convention that uh, we uh, went uh, more times, and we knew some people there and in San Francisco after the because of the convention. So, uh, and and many people go there. So we we thought it was. It would be uh, like a good idea to maybe raise some money to take it uh, for GDC, and then once in the states, tour around and do some renting like a U-Haul or something, <laughs> and and tour around the country. But we had some issues with uh, like custom and like bureaucratic things that we weren't sure we were gonna be able to 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 take it or the, the before GDC. And so we, we, we had to cancel uh, the, the Kickstarter before it really started, but we're, we're gonna, we're gonna get there <laughs> eventually. Yeah. I want to see you guys in America big time. Like I've, I've been keeping my eye on this game for over a year now and I really, really want to play it. And it's cool to hear that you guys have been working on it for so long. Cause that means I missed a lot of the history. Um, I guess, you kind of sort of answered this question, but I want to know what your guys' future plans and hopes are for the game. Well, uh, we the, the the way we present the game is like uh, so uh, hard in a way because uh, the only way to play it is to show it. So uh, our future for, for the game is that we we because um, with with, the, with these games. With, with this game, we, we tried lots of things, and one of the things that we tried and, uh, and, and we fantasized about and that kind of works is like the, the uniqueness of the cabinet and that thing that uh, knowing about it uh, and, uh, and not being able to play it or, on the other hand, like not knowing about it at all and then walking into a place and playing it and as a surprise, that experience of finding a, a, a physical game that you've been seeing uh, like uh, virtually or like finding a cabinet that you didn't know it existed uh, um, makes us want to, uh, to, to, to make uh, other players from other parts of the world to experience that, you know, like uh, to play in the game that every people that play the game uh, you know, pl- playing the machine that everyone played on, 
and that's the machine and that's the, the machine where you make the, the score and that's the only moment when you are playing Nave, you're the only person on earth playing Nave and that kind of uh, experience, uh, we, we wanted to show it all around the world. So uh, we, we've been planning because we had a, like a kind of a launch in 2013, uh, like, uh, like a press release of Nave. So we, uh, there was like a lot of people that fan around Uh, in many arcades and, and many in, in the arcades like in Chicago and stuff and, and also in arcades in Europe and Barcade and many of the uh, well-known, uh, you know, Barcades and, and, and conventions and, and arcades. So uh, our future is to like prepare and, and produce like a, a big trip uh, and talk to all that, all those, uh, uh, all that people that uh, invited us through the years Uh, and we've been like gathering all the contacts, uh, all the uh, all their contacts since uh, since we never started. So uh, we, we 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 we'd like to have that big uh, tour that maybe will have will be in parts. But the 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 future in Nave is like to make people able to, to play the game in the way it should be played uh, for us or, or the way the, the other players that are here in Argentina already played it uh, so they can feel it first, firsthand. So uh, th that's, that's our main plan. And, and at the same time, it's working with other projects because we know that uh, like a new project like uh, empowers previous projects. And so uh, we know that if we keep on working on uh, like keep on moving Nave and keep on working on other projects, we, we someday we'll, we'll, we'll be able to travel around and make people play this weird, uh, unique arcade from, from South America. Yeah, I love that. I mean, the, the hope and plan of just making the world tour is, is basically the goal that you're saying here. So um, I think we're about ready to wrap it up. I want you guys to shout out anybody that has helped you along the way, any of your long-term players, um, as well as giving us those social media links so that people can find you guys. Okay. Uh, let me check because I, I have, uh, well, we, uh, mainly, uh, first, uh, we uh, will tell, uh, uh, our, our contacts, uh, we have, uh, on Instagram, it's, uh, at video gamo or video gamo dot inc. INC and then it's video game or video gamo uh, on Twitter same uh, on Facebook it's uh, video gamo and also uh, nave arcade nave arcade uh, and uh, we have our personal contacts uh, mine is uh, on Instagram is h dot s a e z h size and uh, same for Uh, and Maximos is uh, in, in Twitter is like at m at Maxi Warga, M A X I B O R G A. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's not easy to <laughs> spell all this, but uh, no. And and uh, a shout out to all our our, our colleagues uh, here in Argentina, uh, Tumba Games, Shiri Games, uh, Jupitron. Uh, Andres Borghi, uh, Waman Studios, uh, Game Ever, uh, and Tum well, Tumba already said, said it, Trucho Toys. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and if you, um, if you contact us with uh, asking uh, about info about all the other arcades and the arcade scenes, We will uh, we'll give you all the information and all the all the uh, accounts and everything you need to know to discover uh, a whole new bunch of uh, arcades of indie arcades that you normally don't see. Awesome! You got any more shout-outs, Maximo? Mm. No, uh, I don't think so. Uh... Oh, shout out to yes to uh, my sister Paloma uh, that is, is the 
only employee of <laughs> Video Gamo, and that's that's been helping us uh, uh, for a while now. And and uh, yeah, and she's a, a part of of uh, Video Gamo right now. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming on here, and I'm glad that we could tell the story of Nave. Um, we'll definitely have to have you back on for another episode about Double Tone, so that I can hear more about that. Um, but until next time, peace.